I like you've heard, you know the Cambodian history and stuff. I eh? oh, the Pol Pot quick re- breakdown. Yeah, oh, well, no, you give it to them. Oh, there's a great book. Uh, I think it's like When I Fall Down. It's by this guy. He was about 14 or 15 when the Khmer Rouge. Yeah. So basically, this guy Pol Pot, he committed one of the greatest uh, ethnic oh not uh, what's called. Ethnic cleanse. Nah. As a, as a he ethnic, killed his own people. He's killing his own people. He's killing his own people. So he killed all the doctors, engineers, lawyers, like yeah. anyone who was educated. He would take, like, they all came at night to say, oh, the war's coming. We've got to take you out of the city. Yeah. So basically, what they did there was they, you know, put all the, you know, educated people one side and then, you know, put them in prison, eventually killed them all. And then the rest of the people, they took them to like farms, like rice paddies. Yeah. And they would make them work like 18 hour days, like slaves. They wouldn't pay them nothing. It was like sort of a socialist, like a strong communist, yeah, yeah, communist the country. Is. Yeah, and basically he sort of fucked the whole country <laughs> up. Like killed, he killed what? <laughs> 1.4 million of his own people? Uh, Something actually, along that, I can't eh? I remember the figure to yeah. be honest, as a myth. And, guy, and this guy, you know, in his story, he would tell like, you know, he, he couldn't shit. Because he had no food in him. And yeah. he would explain, like, there would be massive graves. They'd line everyone up and just kill them. And it was so horrible. And, you know, the reason, like, I think you you were telling me this, like, about last year. And I was like, holy shit. Like, he went there. Yeah. But how were the survivors there? Like, did you meet any people that, you know, opposed it or were, like, for it? So, um, like, the the, the survivors. So, yeah. The top part of, oh, I hate to say that, the upper class of society yeah. were just, yeah, culled off. And so you get everyone just as a now a farm worker. So everyone is on this. So so the major things that did happen there are a lot of the older people would, would like, died off because if they weren't killed initially, they wouldn't have survived the farm work and stuff. Yeah, so a, lot a lot of work, of, yeah. So there's hardly any, like, older people now left in Cambodia which is crazy as well really yeah so there's a lot of people that are probably like 10 years older than me most of the population there must be like this huge spike in the population where they had to repopulate yeah yeah so they've got quite a young like economy Um, the other thing is they're really 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 focused on education because all of the educated people got taken away yeah. So, so Cambodia is hugely focused on education for that exact reason because they need to build mm. it back up again, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was um, it was really weird though. Like, you, you like listen to us. Like, why would you do that? You know, you want if you want a prosperous, even like if you want a prosperous economy. Like, I think he wanted a lot of you know uh, money, all this stuff. Yeah. Even though, like, don't you think like educated people would like advance that? You know, like, but oh. I think the the reason why he did it, the reason I think so, is that he didn't want anyone as a high, like, educated person to sort of realize, tell everyone. Challenge him. Yeah, challenge him and be like, no, this, what you're doing is, like, pretty wrong. Like, oh, it is yeah. wrong. I mean, it's just an experiment for communism by the look of it, to be honest. Um, He, he also came in to clear out this guy called Lon Nol, which was the... The I prince? Think, no, I think that um, maybe America had set Lon Nol up, but he was like a big failure. So the people that were actually looking for change. So when he came in, it might have been like, was it like, was Lon Nol 76 to 79 or something like that? So whenever, yeah. whenever Pol Pot, when he came in, the people were like, yes, finally, our savior. They were celebrating yeah, they were on celebrating. the street. Yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. you know, ha- like, the, the, like oh, yes, finally, the yeah. people from like Pol Pot's come from down from Vietnam. The Red Rouge is here to save us. But yeah, yeah it was just a... Oh, it's a horrific time. and But one thing I will say, people that go through trials, it, it, it's a huge, they have a huge amount of growth. Like the people in Cambodia are so lovely. I, I hate to say because of that, but as, as a result of this, the Red Rouge happening, the people in Cambodia today are so lovely and genuine. Yeah. And yeah, they're just awesome people. Well, I think awesome. there's like, because I was uh, listening to Sebastian Junger, he talked about tribes and how most people connect at when you have a conflict. You know, when these things happen, yeah, they connect because they have to like uh, forge together to survive. Yeah, and I think like maybe one of the reasons why they're so connected as like a country is because you know they've gone through that. Yep, yep, and definitely. their family's gone through it. They see the worst side, so they're gonna work together. Because they've already seen that, and now they have to 
you know the alternative is to you know be progressive you yep. know choose this 